I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Yes, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation laid by our Lord. Well, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Yes, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation laid by our Lord. Oh yes, he laid a sure foundation. He laid a precious cornerstone and it remains. I, my heart, I believe it remains eternally. Welcome to the reading of the word of God on this glorious new day, September 18, September 18. I am so excited to see all of your names. It's just like school lining up to take their seat or something. Isn't it glorious? He's given us a brand new day. Brand new. I mean, just think about that. We have barely used it yet. And yet he has laid the whole day out before us. So praise the Lord. We are reading here on September 18, Isaiah Yeshayahu, chapter 28, we've already begun, and we will pick up with verse 14. Isaiah, Yeshayahu, 28, picking up with verse 14. And just listen to this. I mean, can you imagine knowing that you have agreed with these words? I'm going to start off with that Isaiah received and had to give out to the people. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men who rule this people who are in Jerusalem because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol, we are in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood, we have hidden ourselves. Well, those are the foolish men, aren't they? They think God doesn't know. He doesn't see. Excuse me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a tried one a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily, will not act hastily. Also, I will make justice the measuring line. Oh, wow, what a wonderful statement. That's what we want for the measuring line in our lives, isn't it? Justice, true justice. And righteousness, the pulmut, the hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled is what God has to say back to them. And your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. The Lord is telling them exactly the opposite of what they said. Wow. Is that a lesson for us to examine our lives by, to use this as the pulmont, as the measuring line? 
as often as it goes out, it will take you. For morning by morning, it will pass over, and by day and by night. It will be a terror just to understand the report. For the bed is too short to stretch out on. Oh, we can all identify with that comment, can't we? And the covering so narrow that one cannot wrap himself in it. For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perazim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. Now therefore, do not be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong, for I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a destruction determined even upon the whole earth. Take that one in. That doesn't say everybody except America, everybody except Israel, everybody except name your place. A destruction determined even upon the whole world. Give ear and hear my voice, Isaiah says. Listen and hear my speech. Does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? When he has leveled its surface, does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin, plant the rose, the rose of wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its place. For he instructs him in right judgment. His God teaches him. And oh, isn't that so true? All, all of the wisdom and the knowledge that the farmer has originally came from the Lord. Telling them, I mean, look at here. He is pointing out black cumin. He's pointing out put the wheat in rows. He's pointing out, for he instructs him in right judgment. God teaches him, for the black cumin is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over the cumin, but the black cumin is beaten out with a stick. See, I didn't know that till I read this in the Word. And the cumin with a rod. One of them with a stick, the other one needs a rod. Bread flour must be ground. Therefore, he does not thresh it forever. Break it with his cartwheel or crush it with his horseman. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is excellent. He is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Oh, there, there's a, such an encouraging word for you and me today. We move right along to chapter 29 of Isaiah Yeshayahu. Woe to Ariel, another word for Jerusalem. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Add year to year, let feasts come around, yet I will distress Ariel. There shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be to me as Ariel. I will encamp against you all around. I will lay siege against you with a mound, and I will raise siege works against you. You shall be brought down. You shall speak out of the ground. Your speech shall be low, out of the dust. Your voice shall be like a medium's, out of the ground. And your speech shall whisper out of the dust. 
Wow, that that needs to be read and reread and Holy Spirit, breathe on it. Moreover, the multitude of your foes shall be like fine dust and the multitude of the terrible ones like chaff that passes away. Yes, it shall be in an instant suddenly. You will be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. The multitude of all the nations who fight against Ariel, fight against Jerusalem, even all who fight against her and her fortress and distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall even be as when a hungry man dreams and look, he eats, but he awakes and his soul is still empty. His soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreams and looks, he drinks, but he awakes. It was a dream. And indeed, he is faint. And his soul still craves. So the multitude of all the nations shall be. That's how all those nations shall be who fight against Mount Zion, Mount Zion. Wow. I mean, God, the fiercest words God has, I think, is for situations and people that are going to try to work against his city, Jerusalem, and his people in Israel. Pause and wonder blind yourselves and be blind they are drunk but not with wine they stagger but not with intoxicating drink for the lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes namely the prophets and he has covered your heads namely the seers. The whole vision has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one who is literate, saying, read this, please. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And then the book is delivered to one who is illiterate, saying, read this, please. And he says, I am not literate. Therefore, the Lord said, inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and they honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Therefore, behold, I will again do a marvelous work among this people, a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. Hidden. Can't find it. Can't find any wisdom. Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel far from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. They say, who sees us? And they also say, who knows us? Surely you have things turned around. Shall the potter be esteemed as the clay? For shall the thing made say of him who made it, he did not make me? Or shall the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while till Lebanon 
shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be esteemed as a forest? In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The humble also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel, for the terrible one is brought to nothing. The scornful one is consumed, and all who watch for iniquity are cut off who make a man an offender by a word and lay a snare for him who reproves in the gate and turn aside the just by empty words. Therefore, thus says the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. And here is a beautiful quote. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, nor shall his face now grow pale. But when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will hallow my name and hallow the Holy One of Jacob and fear the God of Israel. These also who erred in spirit will come to understanding, and those who complained will learn doctrine. How about that? Those who complained will learn doctrine. And we move along to chapter 30 of Yeshayahu, is Isaiah. Woe! Hoo -hoo. That word just even gives me chills. Woe! To the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame and trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. For his princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Hanes they were all ashamed of a people who could not benefit them or be help or benefit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden against the beasts of the South through the land of trouble and anguish from which came the lioness and the lion, the viper, and the fiery flying serpent, they will carry their riches on the backs of young donkeys and their treasures on the humps of camels to a people who shall not profit. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I have called her Rahab Hemshebet which means do nothing, be still. Do nothing, be still. Rahab hem shabet. Now go write it before them on a tablet and note it on a scroll, that it may be for time to come, forever and ever. That this is a rebellious children, lying children, Children who will not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things, speak to us smooth things, 
prophesy de deceits. Get out of the way. Turn aside from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease <clears throat> from before us. <coughs> How about that? Boy, that, that's, that's a stiff word. Very, very stiff. <coughs> Excuse me. We move right along now. And we're reading from Galatians in the New Testament. We are reading in chapter 3, picking up with verse 23. <coughs> Galatians 3, 23. But before faith came, Paul says, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law <coughs> was our tutor. <coughs> now, there's a good explanation of why the law, what the law, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, <clears throat> for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And to that I say hallelujah. We move along to chapter 4 of Galatians. Now, I say that the error, H-E-I-R, the inheritor, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. <clears throat> Even so, we... When we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons Oh, hallelujah. You've been adopted. You are now a daughter. You are a son. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God's. But now after you have known God, or rather, you are, you are known by God, <laughs> I, those are pretty good words, aren't they? <clears throat> How is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? I don't desire again to be in bondage like I used to be, do you? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid of you, Paul says lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you, 
Paul says, you have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached to the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. <clears throat> so now we have the, the, the only sentence that, that we know here that kind of lets us know what Paul was suffering, something with his eyes. You would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you, my little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone. For I have doubts about you. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. <clears throat> but he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Arabia. <clears throat> and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, and now here's a quote from a wonderful Isaiah, in Isaiah 54, verse 1. Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Wow. Think about that statement. Now we, brethren, as Isaac, Yitzhak, was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. <clears throat> Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? And the scripture says, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. <clears throat> I bet that shook things up when that was spoken. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. To that I say hallelujah, don't you? <laughs> hallelujah. All right, precious sisters and brothers, let's continue on here on this beautiful day with Psalm 62. 
Psalm 62. It's another Psalm of David. He gave it to the chief musician, to Jedathan. Jedathan. And here's what David had to say. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. I shall not be moved. No, I shall not be moved. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. <clears throat> mm. Seems to me we have some of that same stuff going on today. And after that statement is that famous little word, Selah. Selah. My soul, David cries, wait silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Contemplate. Think about that. Let those words ring in your mind and in your spirit. <clears throat> Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increased, do not set your heart on them. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this that power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you render to each one according to his work. Wow. We need to look over our work, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Make sure we are doing well in this word of God. We wrap up today's great, great reading. Oh my goodness, what powerful words today. I, I can hardly speak them strong enough. We wrap it up with Proverbs chapter 23, verses 19 through 21. Proverbs 23, 19 through 21. Oh, this is so good. Hear, my son and be wise and guide your heart in the way. Do not mix with wine bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. <clears throat> wow. That's, that's a very prow powerful proverb there, isn't it? The drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty. And drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. The man who just constantly <clears throat> sitting down in a chair, folding his hands, falling asleep. Well, my precious 
my precious ones who I love so much. <clears throat> Let's wrap it up with prayer. Father God, you are God. <clears throat> We've read again today, Lord, <clears throat> you are God over all of us, over this earth, over the whole universe. You have created it. <clears throat> you set things in a certain fashion. And when we follow you and your ways, things are so much better. There's no other better way. Father God, we come to you all in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. <clears throat> and Lord, we lift up Jerusalem. We lift up this precious, precious city. We lift up your people, Lord, your Jewish people. We lift up Israel. We lift up all of the Jews all across the whole earth, and so many of them are desiring in their hearts to come home, come home to Israel. You have fashioned their hearts that they, they are just, there's something missing where they live. And when they come home to Israel, they know their home. They know this is the inheritance. And so, Lord, we pray for her peace. You have asked us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we do. Please, Lord, let peace be within her. Let peace be everywhere, everywhere. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glorious Jerusalem, with all of her sounds, all of the food that's cooked, the fresh bread that you see men carry down the street in the morning. They walk right past you and you just want to turn around and follow them. Such a wonderful place, a wonderful land. And Lord, we lift her up. We lift her up. We'd ask, Lord, that you would be with the Knesset, that you would let them find, even stumble upon your ways, your will, what you would like them to do. You have put them there, Lord, and I'm sure you have many, many ways to get your message to them. <clears throat> Father God, we hold up America. We hold her up to you, Lord. There are things going on today that are troubling in our hearts, and Lord, we hold them all up to you, each and every one of us. Hold up the people and the issues that we feel are the present problems. Father God, we are crying out to you for righteousness. We are crying out from our hearts, from our souls, for righteousness in this land, for truth. And Lord, we see you doing it. We see your hand. We see you revealing things that are not right. People who are not where they should be. They're not in the placement that you designed, but they took it upon themselves to put themselves in a place and then they wonder why there's a struggle. <clears throat> Lord, we seek you today. We seek your wisdom. We seek your counsel. We seek, Lord, all that you have for us today. That we might be wonderful witnesses for you. That we might be filled with your word, your power, your ways that your light might shine from us. Oh, precious Lord, precious Lord, have your will and way. Lord, <clears throat> I choose to already be in prayer for the coming elections in America. Precious Lord, I am still praying that you will raise up. I don't know if 
there's time yet, but I'm going to pray it anyway, that you raise up the people you want to run in all the offices. <clears throat> that you give them your wisdom, Lord, your direction. That you help them. Father God, we are, we are such poor givers, really. Poor givers. Particularly when it comes to government. Lord, <clears throat> help us to really search out <clears throat> all the candidates running for every election, everything that would be on the ballot that we would receive. And Lord, help us to be good stewards for you. Help us to read and to investigate all of the people <clears throat> from every direction we can find. And then we're asking that Holy Spirit help us and direct us. I'm asking, Lord, that you put a great desire in people who have neglected to vote, made many for many, many years. Some people have never voted. Father God, you have given us this great gift in America. I'm asking, precious God, please, cause all of us as a nation to take it seriously, that we have this opportunity to seek you and be led by you and to vote <clears throat> and to take care of those elections, that there be no fraud, that there be no cheating. Help us, Lord. Help us to volunteer. Help us to help. And if nothing else, to give, to give. That those who you want to have in will have what they need to do what it takes. And I thank you for that, Lord. I love praying that. I love praying that. I love my country. I want America to continue to be a good example not a horrible example of bad things, not of trouble and confusion, and, but I want America to be a beacon of light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need good people in good positions that the gospel might flow freely. So Lord, we wanna thank you for this day. We wanna thank you for this time <clears throat> that we've been able to gather together to read your word and to pray. Father, I'm asking that you hear all of the prayers of your sons and daughters, <clears throat> the ones who are here now, the ones who will come later in the day, maybe they'll come tomorrow, whenever they come, Lord. Please bring answers. Lord, I'm asking that you bring healing for my precious sister Kay. Healing, Lord. Reveal the plan that you have from heaven to her, to any medical people, and let there be an assurance, Lord, from you. And we know you could heal her right now. And oh, that would be our heart's cry, Lord. For we desire to see more miracles, more things happen that we know you did. You just did it. We bless you today, Lord. We thank you that you saved us. You took us out of the miry clay of our life. You took us out and you brought us in to your kingdom. And we love you and we love the kingdom. And all God's people cried hearty, amen. Continued on with your own time with the Lord. Let it be sweet as sugar. Have a great day. Bye-bye.